shut up compressor. Hey everyone, Matt here with Duke's Models and welcome to part two of the U9 U-Boat build. Now this installment is going to be entirely focused on the main painting process, so getting the principal colors down on the sub. And unfortunately, I somehow managed to lose track of the first couple of segments that I shot that involve primer. So to catch you up quickly, I sprayed it with black Steinol Reds. The end. Okay, let's talk a little bit about paint colors. So looking at the painting guide in the instructions, we have two main colors, light gray and whole gray. And these are RAL 7001 and 7016, respectively. Now, I don't have either of those. <laughs> um, in terms of the Tamiya paints, I do have XF-19, which is sky gray. I do not have XF-77, which is some sort of Japanese naval arsenal color. I don't have Mr. Hobby's H series, but I do have the guns Mr. Color C11, which is the equivalent of H51, and that is light gold gray. However, this one has gone to seed pretty badly. And honestly, I should probably just toss it because ugh, that's not looking so hot, right? C301, which is the equivalent of H301, is basically everybody's favorite Euro 1 dark gray, otherwise sometimes known in some circles as dark gunship gray. And for some reason, I cannot get this open right now, but I've got a guns pot of it. There we go. So it needs mixing, obviously. That's been sitting for a while, but it still sprays. Now my other options, even though this doesn't really mention MRP at all, I can just kind of skate into equivalence, right? So for the sky gray, Tamiya XF-19, which looks like that, I've got a couple of options here. One of them is MRP Sky Gray, which looks significantly lighter and cooler, so I'm not super sure about that. I've also got this modern Italian Sky Gray, which is a darker tone for sure, but I think isn't that far off. But I think in this case, I'm still gonna use just the good old Sky Gray, it seems to fit. And unfortunately, I don't have a light gold gray MRP to kind of test these against to see how it would work as well. So, sky gray it is, and I'm going to be doing some stuff here to either darken or lighten it. I'm not sure which one yet, because I want to do some hairspray distressing on the gray parts of the hull. On to the dark gray. So again, we've got the C301 Euro 1 dark gray. MRP's version of this I've run into problems with before in that it is super light at least on a at least on a comparative basis so here's 301 with some minimal mixing it's a very very dark rich gray tone <laughs> and here is MRP's interpretation of it uh, this is one of the few colors that I feel they just get completely wrong fortunately we have another good option here, which is a Soviet color, AMT 12 dark gray, which looks really cool. Uh, I use it quite a bit. In fact, and I wouldn't, I honestly wouldn't hesitate to use it in lieu of Euro 1 gray or dark gunship gray. So I think I'm probably going to use a combination of these three guys here. So sky gray, C301, Euro 1 gray, and AMT 12. And I've been going back and forth all day over which one I want to do first. And I think I'm going to go with the lighter gray first, only because up here on the conning tower, it's much, much harder, I think, to mask off the dark gray than it is the light gray. Everywhere else, it's kind of about equal in terms of how much it'll suck, but up here it'll be worse. So with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and get started on the sky gray. 
Okay, so I'm calling a little bit of an audible and I've decided to go with the MRP Modern Italian Sky Gray first and then come back and put the Tamiya Sky on top of that. So for this, I'm using the PS267. So I want a little bit more room than the 770 and 771 afford me. Here we go. So I basically just want to start by getting coverage some sort of base to start playing with. Yuck, dusting. Where's that coming from? This shouldn't be happening. Where is that from? Fuck me. All right, let's see if it's this paint causing it, and maybe it's the spring conditions because it's cold as fuck tonight. Or if that's just something that Steiner Res did weird up there. The most part is looking fine over in this section. So, fuck. That's a Steiner Res problem then. Well, that'll be fun to discover as I sp spray the rest of the boat. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and paint the rest of the boat, come back and clean these things up, and we will progress from there. Okay, so the rest of U9 has gotten its coat of gray, and I'm now sweeping back around to deal with the port bow area, which I came and knocked down the roughness with a sanding sponge and a fiberglass pen, and everything now should be hunky-dory. There we go. And if we zoom out, there is the whole boat all painted up in gray. We've got the conning tower kind of hanging out doing its thing. Maybe. There we go. Yeah, next up, uh, coming back in with some hairspray and some sky gray or either that or some lightened Italian sky gray and doing some distressing work, then trying to seal that so we don't get tape lift and moving into all the masking for the deck, the little areas up here, the hole, and all the shit that is gonna be dark gray. Okay, now that the Italian sky gray is down, it's time to bring some hairspray out to play. This is just Tresemme number three. Nothing super fancy about it. And it doesn't matter if we fuck this up because there's gray underneath it. So if it chips too much, oh well. All right, now that the hairspray is dry, I'm gonna go back over with a mix of three parts modern Italian sky gray, 
one part of MRP 246 Light Arctic Grey, which is a wonderful dirty white, and a big old dropper full of Mr. Leveling Thinner to help basically thin it out, as thinner does. Okay, the lighter sky gray mix has been applied, and now it is time to chip. Okay, so it's slow going, but I finally got some chips going. Uh, maybe not so much on, up on the bow, but as we get back along the hole. Like particularly right back in here. We're getting some good streaking and some good chipping. And I think it'll look pretty nice once it's all said and done, but this is a tedious, laborious process. So, I'm going to break away, listen to a podcast while I do this, and be right back. Okay, so I've gone ahead and worked my way through the chipping and distressing operations, and it ended up rather more subtle than I was anticipating. But it definitely does show up, and as it dries, it actually goes quite a bit more subtle, which is pretty cool. So like if you look at the conning tower back here, that one is still drying, so it still shows a lot more contrast than the other side. But it's still pretty subtle, and once all the weathering and stuff goes on top of it, I think it'll definitely look the business. Okay, so now that the distressing is done on the light gray, it's time to move on to all of the dark gray. So the deck, the decks of the conning tower, the whole upper portion of these bulged areas on the hull, the entire hull itself, the dive planes, all that stuff. And to get there, I basically have to go through masking hell. So rather than force you all to watch that because it's really not exciting at all, I'm going to go ahead and do all the masking and we'll pick back up with spraying the dark gray. Holy shit. So it's taken an entire bench session to get this boat masked off. And honestly, the outlining wasn't that big of a deal. It was all the infilling because the infills in a lot of these areas are very narrow and you have to deal with protrusions like from the whale harpoons, for example. And it just time slips away. Another thing I would note is if you want to do the canvas wrapped cage, you've got to get in there and mask off the individual railings. Fun. So yeah, I wasn't going to do that, but I honestly, I like the canvas look quite a bit. So I want to give it a shot. One nice thing is the gray down, you know, the stuff that's masked off on the outside here on the inside is not really that big of a deal because it technically is going to sit below the level of the wood deck. So I'm totally comfortable just uh, coming in and touching that up with like some close enough Vallejo gray later on down the line. Other than that, I opted not to try to mask off the top of the sausage lockers here. And instead, I'm going to come back and mask off the deck once it's painted and just repaint those with some gray. Uh, same with the deck mounts here for these mast dealies. So yeah, and th there's some stuff back here too that needs the same kind of treatment. So there will be masking after this masking and after the dark gray is painted. So yeah, it might have taken a lot longer than I wanted it to, but the boat's ready for the next stage of painting now. So let's go ahead and move on into it. Okay, so it's the next day and it's time to paint the dark gray. And for this, I'm gonna be using primarily MRP's AMT-12 dark gray. This is a lovely, dirty, warm gray used by the Soviets in World War II for their aircraft, but I'm gonna be using it for a World War I German sub because, yeah. 
And my intention is to start out with just a light coat to get things going and then work in some fun along the way. But before I even touch the boat itself, I want to go ahead and get these dive planes sorted out. Now the instructions call for what looks like gray borders around the dive planes up front. But this is the only really view of any kind you actually get of them. And you know, I'm figuring we've got dive planes below the waterline. So it makes sense, I guess, for the ones that go up here, but the ones below the waterline, fuck it, they're gonna be dark gray. I got sick of masking because it took me an entire damn bench session. So those are these guys. And I'm just gonna give them a quick coat on one side only right now. Now we're gonna go to their masked companions. I'm going to do a little bit of waterline work before I really get things moving here. Okay, let's go ahead and move up a little bit, do some of the top deck stuff. Holy shit, was that an effort. Okay, so all the dark gray areas have been painted. It's looking pretty good, but it's looking kind of plain. So I'm gonna get in here and break this up a bit. I've done a mix of AMT-12, some of this dark gunship gray, MRP-241, the one that I think is too light, but it's a nice, dirty, dark gray. So I've mixed them up. I've thrown in some Mr. Leveling Thinner. And now it's time to start adding a bit of fun with stencil work. Very subtle. Up a little bit, play with different stencils. Okay, so you kind of get a sense of how things are going. I'm gonna continue on the stencil work sort of across the dark gray portions of the boat and we'll pick back up once that's done and move into the next stage. Okay, so I've kind of been over the whole boat with the stencils and you can just kind of see them catching the light. So it's a very subtle effect, but I hope as I move into weathering that little tiny bit of difference will add to the layers without me having to do too much work because this is a very, very fast build. So, sweet. Now I want to do one more thing before I start ripping tape off. And that is painting up the canvas. So for that, I'm gonna use some clear doped linen. One of my favorite MRP colors. Okay, so I've actually taken the clear doped linen, MRP-256, and I have mixed it with some MRP beige to give it a little bit of a creamier tone. So 
Now it's time to go ahead and do some spraying. Okay, so there is the canvas cover for the flying bridge, I think it is, cage thing. Ah, I'm making a mess everywhere. Okay, so the U9 is now out the other side of the really big painting steps. It's got the light gray where it needs to go, distressed with a lighter gray and some hairspray. It's got the darker gray, slightly distressed with some stencil masks and a lighter mix of gray on top of that. So what comes next? Well, next is a lot of small things. So I need to come in and for example, mask and spray the top of the sausage lockers and the little mounts for the antennas. I need to deal with like the machine gun tripods, some shit like that. Nothing super difficult to deal with. It's more just a matter of, there wasn't really a place for it while I was painting all of this. There's also, it's probably hard to see from that angle, but up here on the front of the boat, right up here, there's a little bit of roughness that I'm not happy with. It shows up on like macro photos. So I'm probably gonna go in there and knock that down and maybe respray a little bit in here just to clear that up. And then after that, it's a matter of putting down some gloss to uh, basically protect the hairspray distressed areas so that further work doesn't rip stuff off. Okay, so I've got everything masked off and it's time to go ahead and spray these antenna mount things. And the, uh, <laughs> the confines here make this pressure seem a lot higher than it is. Okay, now we're gonna get this one right here. One other fun bit is this little tiny ring on the conning tower. Okay, so I've also got some details back here on the back of the boat, and I'm gonna spray these off camera because there's no real way to position the boat that it can be held and I can use my right hand to spray this stuff without knocking things over and causing a big ass mess. So I'm gonna spray those and we'll pick back up and knock out the sort of other side of these various mounts. Okay, so the tricky part here is getting this interface of this thing knocked out. Okay, next up we've got the sausage lockers. And for these, I'm gonna keep with the modern Italian sky gray, but I'm also throwing in a little bit of MRP 242 sky gray, which is that lighter, cooler sky gray. Basically just to get some separation from the rest of the overall gray going on on the hull. Okay, so that's one side. Let me go ahead and spray the top side of the other side. Move out of the way, cutting tower. I want to capture this edge. Okay, now I'm gonna flip this around and it's gonna to be tough to film again. So that's the idea. Next, we will be stripping off the masking and doing some stuff on the darker gray decking. Okay, so next I'm picking out some individual deck panels and giving them a coat first of AMT gray mixed with some dark gunship gray. Basically make them a little bit lighter than the surrounding panels. And I've added some Mr. Leveling Thinner in here as well to give myself an extra little bit of room to play with the opacity of this. Now I'm gonna grab a little bit extra dark gunship gray, 
come back and hit it again just very lightly. And then we're going to use the stencil masks again. Sort of beat these up as best we can. One more good pass here. See what we're looking like. See, it's catching the light like that, so if we turn it up. See, so yeah, as you can see here, it's a shade or two lighter than the rest of the deck, so it'll give it a good visual pop, add some additional contrast and visual interest to what was otherwise just a straight gray deck. And hopefully, with additional weathering coming in on top of this, It'll blend it back so it's not a bunch of stark squares sticking out. These things will just be naturally a bit lighter and uh, kind of pop compared to the rest of the ship. So, sorry, boat. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up the rest of the panels here and then be back to wrap this video up. Okay, so here is the U9 at the end of the main painting stage. Now, yes, there are still many things that need painting that haven't been covered yet. Uh, the red bell things that go here and here, the life preservers, the screws that make the boat go. I need to do touch-ups on the periscopes and add the lenses. I need to do touch-ups to the bases of these antennas. I need to work on the machine guns. So there's still painting that has to happen, but all of the main spraying work is now done. And so the U9 is ready for a quick clear coat to seal in the hairspray and keep it from rearing its ugly head during later work. And after that, it's onto decals and weathering. So that is a wrap for part two of the U9 build. And if you've been following along this far, thanks for following along. I know this isn't really so much of a review because now we're into the painting stages and the actual kit has kind of done its part and now it's on my hands. But uh, thanks for sticking around anyway. It's uh, kind of fun to be working on something so completely outside of my comfort zone, even if maneuvering it around the bench is a giant pain in the ass. So. Yeah, thanks for watching and keep an eye out for part three where we will be doing that detail work. We'll be doing the decals, the weathering, and finishing this boat up in, I don't know if I'll make it within two weeks, but it's gonna be pretty close, which is gonna make this one of the fastest builds I've ever done. So, <laughs> holy shit, stick around.